Hello and welcome to TechLore. Today's video will be quite unique as our VPN protocol has changed drastically since the last review. Today's video will be run on version 3.0.1 featuring the first iteration of our VPN speed team who tested iVPN from locations all around the world. Like all VPN reviews here on the channel, we stick to a systematic protocol to keep things transparent as possible and offer you a way of adjusting scores based on what you value. Keep an eye out for a site update to take this to a whole new level. We have six categories, each weighted by importance, followed by an additional section to cover other details that don't directly affect scoring. By the end of the video, I hope you have a solid understanding of what iVPN is all about. History is important when evaluating VPN services, and iVPN is not just whistle clean, but they are repeatedly doing great things in an otherwise generally scummy industry, known as the VPN industry. All of their clients are open source and have been audited for security issues, as most services should. They support OpenVPN and WireGuard out of the box on all of their clients, past all IP and DNS tests on each client, IPv6 isn't currently supported, but it is blocked from use. They implement the standard strong encryption standards necessary for a perfect encryption score. They do implement two-factor authentication, and they are the fastest from misleading marketing. Even, well, let's let this blog post speak for itself. There were no issues when it came to security of iVPN, getting them a perfect score in this category, five out of five. They are really setting a standard here for all other VPNs. We also evaluate history from a privacy perspective, and iVPN is clean here as well. Their logging policy is not only extremely transparent, but it's also thorough and clearly outlines what no logging means. This has all been audited as well. They implement their own first-party private DNS servers. If the 14 eyes are a concern of yours, iVPN is not located within them. There is a warrant canary, their site isn't set up with invasive tracking done on its users, and Rejoice! They offer a cash option, as well as Bitcoin offering an easy, private method of payment. There is currently an email requirement. And finally, there is no misleading marketing on the privacy end as well. The only criteria that dropped their score was the email requirements, which dropped them to 4.7 out of 5 in privacy. Keep an eye out as their login process hints at this changing soon. I want to stress this is the highest score we've ever had in privacy, beating out Molvad, who previously scored 4.5. This is exciting, since like I said earlier, we had our first VPN speed team for this review. For some context, testers around the world were chosen to boot into a virtual machine designed for speed testing VPNs, and results are compiled from there. Let's start with those. Disclaimer, this was our first trial run, and I have no idea what to make of this data. This is currently more of a concept, which will one day turn into a valid form of testing. Globally, on average, iVPN offered about 40% of the download speeds without using a VPN at all. 50% for uploads, an alarming 340 millisecond drop-off in ping, and about 60% of the performance for real-world downloads, which is actually really strong. The most alarming thing here was ping, but if we eliminate our Colombian and Indian tester who had to connect to servers far away from them, you'll see the average ping drop-off is just 40 milliseconds, which is much better than 340. If we eliminate those same testers from all results, you'll see synthetics get a healthy 5-10% to boost. I'll talk about iVPN's limited server availability later in the review. Keep in mind we are dealing with a small population, so again, take these results with a grain of salt. This is currently more of a concept. As for myself, you'll see my results at the top, and if we treat this like a traditional review we've done in the past, I'll tell you synthetics were weak and inconsistent on all servers I tried. However, real-world tests were strong and didn't suffer from this issue. This kind of lines up with the global average results. Using just my results, the speed score comes out to 3.5 out of 5, and unfortunately, we can't currently implement the speed team results into the official scoring yet, since how the hell are we going to score this? The project needs to mature a little bit more, and the idea is to move to relative scoring. So if we had five VPNs tested, whoever was globally the fastest gets five out of five, number two is lower, and etc. Settings across the board for iVPN were good. Not great, but good. On Windows, you're going to have pretty standard settings that you'd find in most clients, a lot of options when it comes to protocols, and you get a few extra bells and whistles, including their firewall, multi-hop, and anti-tracker. There is a hardcore mode I tested which breaks many sites, but is a cool feature for those looking to take things to the next level, especially on mobile when you can't control these things quite as finely as you otherwise would on desktop. 
Speaking of mobile, the iOS client brings over a lot of the features and implements basic settings. Android is quite a bit more extensive, offering things like split tunneling, which I wish was offered on all of their clients, especially desktop programs. Lastly, there are a few extra features in your account portal, like port forwarding, which are easy to miss. Overall, I've seen more settings and features from other services, but iVPN still offers what I'd consider a healthy number with a few neat bells and whistles. Keep in mind this may be perfect for some of you, because not everyone wants heavy customization. But from a review perspective, the feature set isn't the most extensive, yet still recommended, earning them 4 out of 5. The Windows experience was overall positive. The UI is clean, straightforward, offers settings where they should be, and I loved the attention to detail, like your username and IP address don't show in the UI unless you click more information, which is something many providers forget. My one complaint, which is similar to that of Winscribe, is you're limited to this non-adjustable, small UI, which on a 4K display is kind of frustrating, and it'd be cool if maybe the smaller UI was just locked to the taskbar notification area, or at least offering that as a setting. This is very nitpicky, but it's a review. Overall experience on macOS was similar, not much more to add. Linux is unfortunately only a CLI, and it's... Meh, I've used the nicer, more intuitive ones, but once you learn the program, it's okay to use. Android, I like to think, is their best client. It has split tunneling, which as far as I know isn't offered on any other client. It's obtainable directly from Fdroid, the open source app store, meaning it's open source, like all their other clients, and it's ensured there are no harmful third-party trackers. They deserve major props for listing their app on Fdroid, this is awesome iOS was also a great experience, and it's about as customizable and polished as it gets on iOS, so I really have no complaints there as well. The auto-connect feature across all devices was very accurate, and iVPN is open to P2P traffic, despite apparently some issues with DMCA requests. In terms of logging in, all you need is your iVPN username. That's it, so it's pretty unique in that sense, and like I said earlier, hopefully that leads into a full email-less experience on a service-wide level. Lastly, it's important to mention all of their clients have been audited and are open source. This cannot be praised enough. So the overall experience and ecosystem was overwhelmingly positive, with in my opinion, Linux being the main place that was lacking. Getting a full GUI is always something I fight for, and it universally deducts half a point in usage. So, iVPN's usage score is 4.5 out of 5. Stability gave me zero issues when using iVPN. There were no problems on any of the clients across the testing process, and no speed testers reported having any issues on their end. 5 out of 5 on stability. Here are a few more things iVPN brings to the table that doesn't impact its scoring. It has 7 simultaneous devices, as for country and server selection, it's not great, and the speed team shed light on this issue, as, like I said earlier, two testers had no nearby servers. Remember to double check server selection to verify you have some near you. Price-wise, this is a more expensive VPN, even on annual. There's a great free trial, you get 3 free days before you're charged, and you can cancel at any time. Props for including an auto bill check mark during registration, that should be legally required, and it's beyond me that people actually abuse this. As for the company itself, they donate to privacy causes like the EFF, and as previously mentioned, have a whistle clean history with hopes of spreading good information on top of being one of the few VPNs with all open source software. In terms of who this VPN is geared towards, I think it really can be used by anybody, it's simple enough for beginners to use, and has quite a good amount of intermediate features to keep the more advanced users happy, even including things like a CLI tool for Windows and Mac. So, iVPN, security and privacy together, just so you know, scored the highest out of any service I've ever reviewed, which is impressive and deserves a pat on the back itself. You will likely get good speeds in real-world usage, assuming there's a server near you. Settings and features were overall recommended, they have some neat bells and whistles, and it comes in a nice audited open source package that is overall nice to use, except personally not the Linux CLI. Stability was perfect all around, earning iVPN a total score of 4.6 out of 5, meaning they're kind of in that, like, tier... Oh god, I don't want to say tier. Meaning they're in that fight on our channel for the top spot between Proton, Winscribe, and Molvad, all three of which hover around 4.6 as well. No matter what, this is one of the best VPNs you can get your hands on. I think that's kind of my takeaway for today. Just make sure its limitations line up with what you need. Thank you for watching this review. If you want to support transparent and community-driven VPN reviews, and then otherwise, 
shitty industry, consider supporting us on Patreon or through several other free methods outlined on our website. We have a major site overhaul coming soon to bring a lot more transparency and education related to VPNs, so I'm hyped to see that come to life. Stick around for that. Thanks again for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with the latest privacy and security content. I'll see you soon, have a Mauritius day.